Out of all the spin-off titles Sonic has starred in, the Sonic Riders series is my favourite, followed by All-Stars, Chronicles, then Storybook. The reason why is because Sonic in a racing game seems natural. Yes, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing and All-Stars Racing Transformed are more traditional racing games compared to Riders, but that's what makes Riders unique. It takes the basic controls of skateboard games and makes it a racing game while applying it to the world of Sonic. The first Sonic Riders is still my favourite. It has a lot to show right out of the gate and can make some new or current Sonic fans wince at the complexity of it. But it's really not that hard. Utilising the character specific abilities of speed, power and flight, you can find shortcuts as well as performing tricks to get more air, which is the fuel source of the boards. Jumping and drifting uses up air, but during the race you can ride an opponent's air turbulence if you fall behind. Not to mention the level up system and the small amount of power ups you can acquire added that extra boost to stay in first place. Okay, maybe it's a little complex. I could go on about the simple story involving the then new characters, the Babylon Rogues, and other features, but then I'll just be repeating myself from the review of the game. The sequel, Sonic Riders Zero Gravity, took a more futuristic approach and had gravity powered hoverboards for racing. While it was more or less the same, it replaced the drifting and boosting with gravity controls, allowing you to find new paths and to ride on walls but a lot of the character specific abilities were locked behind an altered level up mechanic, meaning you cannot grind or fly until level 2. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Plus, Zero Gravity gets a lot more praise for it being more accessible to new players, by taking out some of the more complex features of the first game, such as the trick system, but it reduced the overall speed which is quite apparent to those who play Sonic Riders first. I will say though, Zero Gravity has the better level design. Finally, there's Sonic Free Riders. I wanted this game to be good. I really did. But the idea of a Riders game on the ill-fated Kinect, or just any Sonic game really, soured my expectations. But I still got it and the peripheral to continue with my Riders fanaticism. All I can say is, Free Riders is the reason we haven't seen another entry in this series for 6 years. From my own experience, the game was barely responsive even on the menus. The story was basic and bare bones as possible, and unique abilities could be used by anyone. It should be said that because of the Kinect being unresponsive to my waves and flails, I never finished the game, I just gave up on it. But it had some good ideas such as the new power-ups and reaching out to grab rings and secrets, but it was all for naught. Sonic Freeriders is widely considered one of the worst Sonic games of all time alongside Sonic 06 and Boom Rise of Lyric. There is only two defendable things I can say about Free Riders. The first is the theme song is really good. The second is that everyone was playing it wrong. You're meant to twist your body into a turn like you're actually riding a skateboard, not bend your back as if you're trying to impersonate the L block. So why am I bringing all this up? I said it there and then, the series died with Free Riders. It's because I still have faith in the series, and I think if Sega and Sonic Team use what they've experimented with since 2010, they could breathe new life for this long-awaited fourth installment. Before you ask where I got this logo from, it's mine. I made it. And to everyone who's been stealing it and using it for their own fan works, stop it. Stop it. But anyway, I devised a list of things that could be implemented into a fourth Riders game. But let me start off with a disclaimer. These are what I think could be good to be included in Sonic Riders 4. You're free to agree to disagree and on these points in the comments. But anyway, one. Bring back the controls and the trick system from Sonic Riders. The first Sonic Riders had the best controls, period. Boosting, drifting and jumping all had the risk versus reward factor, which made each race more strategic and, like the name implies, rewarding as you finish the race without losing all of your fuel. Free Riders attempted to emulate this, but to no avail. Jumping and boosting in real life is not as immersive as Sega once thought, so going back to basics would be best, but I think you could still use the fuel gauge from Free Riders. Like with Zero Gravity and its fuel gauge, not being able to boost because you were too greedy with it in the first lap is exactly the risk v rewards the game needs. The trick system was also great, being able to jump at the right time and turning the control stick to pull off a series of flips and landing it with an X grade was greatly satisfying as it also gave you a boost and more air. Reducing it to a simple button prompt takes that satisfaction away. Taking notes from All Stars Racing Transformed, how about we use the right stick to pull off some tricks and some unique tricks for each character? Or maybe, just before landing, hit the boost button to end the series of tricks like in Sonic Rush Adventure and Generations. But most importantly, do not use motion controls of any kind. 2. 
half challenge arenas. Aside from the usual Grand Prix free race time attack and mission modes, how about creating a small challenge arena similar to the early Tony Hawk Pro Skater games? Several small to medium sized areas, be it indoors like Ape Man's Base or an enclosed outdoor space like Angel Island, and the player has to complete 5 to 7 challenges, from getting certain grey to collecting the Chaos Emeralds scattered throughout the area. It adds multiple that's already established and could be a fun distraction from the Grand Prix. 3. Have a decent story that expands the Babylon mythology. Sonic Riders, and especially its sequel Zero Gravity, were very heavy on the story involving the Babylon robes. While I'm still not 100% behind the idea that Babylon Garden and the spaceship and the Babylonians being aliens, it was still engaging and expanded the lore of this ancient civilization and its band of thieves. Free Riders barely acknowledged it. So, still sticking with the futuristic sci fi theme for the fourth game, let's go deep into space and find other planets that Babylonians have influenced throughout time and maybe have the rogues grow more as characters and have Tails and Wave, the smart mechanics of both teams, grow closer as friends. Not that close. 4. Use the parkour gimmick from Sonic Lost World to access new paths. Running up walls, across walls and jumping between them to access new areas and secrets in Sonic Lost World was quite invigorating. True, it needs to be ironed out some more, so it feels more responsive as well as when and where it can be used. But once you get the timing right and discover the best path to use, running and parkouring your way through the end is fun. So using parkour and riders in its correspondence with the trick system can open up whole new paths such as launching off half pipes, running across the wall and jumping into a tube above the main track. Though Zero Gravity used gravity control to make riding a wall and ceilings possible, and if we go back to my last point with the sci-fi theme, parkour may not be needed. But if we forego the gravity abilities, the possibility of parkour is still there and it can make races more fun and variable. 5. Have customizable extreme gears. Zero Gravity and Free Riders did something like this, but only let you customize skills, with Free Riders letting any character have two of the main three abilities. But in Sonic Riders, you collected various amounts of junk and collecting them unlocked new gears, which I used once and never again. Let's go one step further with that and have fully customizable extreme gears. Let us build our own gear with a gear pass once from beating the Grand Prix or Ghost Times. Also on the track in free race and missions, there are discarded gear pass that, once you finish in the race in first, second or third place, that are randomized. These paths can alter stats and the aesthetics of the board from having two thrusters rather than one for speed and different wings for smoother turning. We can also personalize it with decals won by completing minor tasks such as performing tricks and finding hidden paths. But don't pull an EA and give us special gear parts only if we pre-order. That's a dick move. 6. Have online multiplayer. Let me be frank and say that I'm not a huge fan of online multiplayer. I much prefer local given the choice, but I won't deny playing the all-star racing games online was immensely fun. So an online component in a riders game similar to that of the All-Stars is just something that should be included. Rather than a shitty leaderboard that will be hacked by those who think having their name appear in the top means they get all the bragging rights. You don't. And you know you don't. Finally, 7. Have downloadable content. Again, I can't stress this enough, don't carve off bits of the overall experience as a static back to us through pre-order bonuses and limited edition purchases. When it comes to Sonic games, Sega has given us some decent DLC. Yeah, a majority of it is just very hard renditions of existing levels or small mission packs. But at least it's not the entire ending of a game. Cough, Azura's Wrath, unconvincing cough. Instead, for Sonic Riders 4, it gives us whole new tracks based on previous Sega or Sonic games, or import classic Riders tracks updated to match the new gameplay mechanics. You can also bundle one or two tracks together with unique extreme gear or gear parts based on the track. Have something that extends the life of the game and offers more replay value rather than just a simple pinball stage. Seriously, Sega, pinball stage for generations, you've had so many ideas and so many suggestions based on new zones to include, but you give us a pinball stage. And that's what I'd like to see in a fourth Sonic Riders game. Will it happen? More than likely, no. But I can still hope for it, as well as many other long awaited sequels I'd like to see. So, like Rush 3, for example? Did you agree with any of my ideas? And do you have any other suggestions you think that could work? Let me know in the comments below. Also, did you know that certain Sonic tiles have different names depending on its region? Click here to check that out. And don't forget to subscribe to Sonic Guru Productions for future videos. Plus, you can support the channel over on Patreon. I'm Sonic Guru, and I'll see you next time.